your take on the decision, and uh, is this a chip on your shoulder moment? Uh, I don't know. I mean, yeah, do I feel like we're, we were sure that one seed? Yeah, but LSU's had an unbelievable season, you know, so I think, uh, you know, what Joe's done and, and what that team has done, they've done a great job. What Clemson's done, you know, I, I can see that, that argument as well. I mean, they're defending national champs, and they haven't lost a game since and played, you know, great football. So, at the end of the day, uh, you know, you got to beat the best to go win the national championship, and uh, certainly Clemson is that. And uh, so, what matters at the end of the year is, you know, who's who won, not right now. And uh, so, we've got a big challenge out of us as we start to prepare for Clemson. Do you think you deserve one now? Yeah, I mean, I'm competitive, so sure. <laughs> Front row right. Tim? Did, did you think, as you look back on it, that things were kind of set up for it to end up like it did, though, and with them playing the number four team yesterday and you guys playing number eight? Yeah, I don't right? know. I mean, at, at this point, I've, I've kind of moved on. You know, yeah. right now it's on the Clemson. So, um, you know, I, I get it. It's not an easy decision. So, uh, nothing but respect for the committee. I know they have our decision. <laughs> uh, so, I thought we made our case, but it, it's time, time to move on. A three-week break before you play again, it, uh, not a break, you're going to be practicing, but uh, is it a chance to exhale a little bit? I mean, just what's your sense of what y'all have accomplished over these last three weeks especially? Yeah, I told them, you know, I told the team how proud I was of uh, what they did at halftime because, you know, I don't know, I know some people understand it, but I don't think everybody understands, you know, at halftime, you know, you get those games, you know, three emotional games in a row, and then, you know, we're kind of got our backs up against the wall down two scores at halftime. And it, it took toughness and it took love in that, in that locker room for us to come out the way we did in the third quarter. That was probably the, the coolest quarter of football I've ever been a part of. The combination of Buckeye Nation just taking over that stadium and then the way our offense and defense were in a frenzy. Uh, and and there were they were, they were players coming off the field with so much emotion that there was actually tears coming out of their eyes. It was one of the coolest experiences I've been a part of. And, and then to celebrate with that team after coming back like that, that, that was the best game we've had all year because of that. And we found out a lot about ourselves. Second row right, Tony. Right, the, the fake punt call yesterday. Um, why was that the right call? What did you like about it? Because uh, it worked. <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't work. It wasn't a good call. Uh, I just felt like we needed a spark. Matt Barnes had, uh, you know, come up to me uh, earlier in the week and said, you know, we might have something here. Kind of showed why on film and uh, thought it was well thought out. And at that point, we needed a little, we needed a little something. And uh, although it didn't turn into points, I thought it gave us a little jolt in that game. And, uh, also the feeling that, hey, listen, I know we're in a big stage, but we're going to be aggressive. And uh, you can't be afraid to be bold. I told the guys to be bold in that game, and, and that was an example of it. Did you have Drew working on the one-inch drill at all during practice? Not one inch, but he, he's good. Uh, we actually uh, had him throw about a year ago in preseason when we weren't sure when we had Chugs coming in and we were short on numbers. He was taking snaps for us, and uh, he's played quarterback in his career, so we knew he could throw it. And plus, he, that stage isn't too big for Drew, so to make that throw, that wasn't an easy one, by the way. That was It wasn't wide open like we thought it would be. So it was, it was well executed. Front row, uh, right, Bill. Yeah, how much have you seen of Clemson this year, and what are your impressions of, of them if you have one? No, I got, uh, yeah, I mean, the impression is that, you know, they're the, they're the defending champs, and they haven't lost since, and they have a veteran quarterback now who's played a lot of football and he's playing really good. Uh, you know, ATN is, is one of the best backs in the country. Uh, T. Higgins uh, and some of the wildest they have are some of the best in the country. And then what they do on defense and what Brent, Brent Venables has done year in and year out. Uh, you know they're, they're the best defense in the country. Uh, you know if you look over the last five to ten years, you know it's, it's you can make a case that they are the best. And they change up looks. They're aggressive. He's aggressive, and they're very very talented. Seattle has made a point all year of kind of playing the more overlooked card. Uh, does being number two enable you to kind of play that card too? Will you? I mean, at, at this point, I, you know I think it's it's kind of. Uh, you know, it's minuscule at this point. You know, we're, we're, we're all playing for the championship. There's four of us, and we all got to play each other. So mix us up in a bag, and let's go play. Uh, for the second row left, Bill. Ryan, um, whether it be in the offseason or, or spring or whatever, was you're just trying to, you know, think about offense. Do you, do you ever just look around college football and defenses, even if you're not going to be playing them? And if you do, does Clemson show up on that list when you look at them? And then I know you just touched them up there, but uh, yeah. it seems like that'd be like maybe the first one you'd want to look at because they've been so good the last few years. Yeah, I mean, you know, we kind of – I kind of look at offense a little bit just to get you know, different ideas of what people are doing. But uh, yeah, I've watched Clemson this year and just watch what, uh, what, what Coach Venables has done and because uh, he's pretty innovative. You know, he changes up the different looks. He's aggressive. He comes at you. And, uh, so yeah, you know, definitely look at him. And, and uh, you know, he does a great job. And, and those kids play hard for him. So uh, we got to do a great job in preparation. And then a uh, different topic. What is the status of Brendan White? Game yeah, he he he, uh, he wasn't available for personal reasons. Right next door, Ari. 
Hey, Ryan, when did you uh, get those college football playoff shoes made? Uh, Kevin Reese made those six weeks ago. He told me to give them to me today. Um, so did you know six weeks ago that he had them? No, I didn't. He just, he just gave them to me today. So. Uh, what is your love of Air Maxes, and what's it like <laughs> to be able to break those things out? Those probably be, what, a thousand bucks on like a secondary <laughs> website? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I've always liked those original Air Maxes, and then uh, uh, Kevin Reese started, you know, bringing out different pairs, and the guys on the team really liked them. They kind of got fired up with the different colors, and so uh, we wear them on game day. And, and uh, yeah, I, mean, I, I like the different styles and different colors. It's, it's kind of good. Luck. All kidding aside, though, I'm sorry, Jerry, for the we, we got to go. We got, let's go. <laughs> when you put on a, it's not about the shoes, but like when you get a gift like that, does it become real to you? Like, do you, has, has it really sucked in yet? Of like. You've made it, and like, what's really ahead right now? Yeah, well, we're we're here now, like you said. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's we're in it right now. We're in the final four, and uh, we said it was March Madness uh, a few weeks ago, and we're in March Madness. We won those three games to get to the final four, and, and now we get to go play the whole thing. Third row left, Dan. Ryan, obviously, it just preceded your time here, but the 2016 game against Clemson. Is, I know you've talked before about making sure the players understand the history. Do you think that's something that you will use as a motivating factor for this team? I think we'll use it as a reference point, but that's two very different teams. Um, and so, yeah, I mean, I wasn't here, and a lot of guys weren't here, but uh, we'll, we'll definitely use it as a reference point, but I don't think it's very relevant here. Front row right, Austin. Ryan, you, you said you've got to beat two teams no matter what, but when you, as a coach and motivator, see that number pop up, and it's lower than where you were before, do you think I can use that? Or, I just wonder how the brain works when that new information is processed for you. Yeah, again, try not to get too far into that. I know we're, we're just proud of, of what our guys have done. And um, you know, we've done everything we can up to this point. And, and now it's time to go play Clemson. So I think at this point, you can't look back on those kind of things. And, and we can go back and forth about it. I know those guys had a hard decision to make. They made it. And we've got to move on. But we can't uh, worry about that. Again, if, if, uh, if we want to go win the whole thing, we have to be able to play everybody. And, and so now we get a chance to go play Clemson. Uh, fr front row middle, Joey. Obviously, probably most teams could use a break this time of year. Um, the fact that you close the season with like three top fifteen teams, how, how badly do you think your team needs some rest, especially yeah, after last night? I think it's night? really important. Yeah, and, and you know, physically, I, I actually we're okay physically. To be, you know, uh, to be honest, but I, I think emotionally and mentally, we, we need a little break here. We need to get away. So we'll do a little lifting, a little running here. Uh, but what it, what it takes to go win a game like that after the, the couple games we had leading up to it, it's just not easy to do. I mean, it was truly March Madness. It was like playoff football. And um, and so now they, they needed some time away just to kind of catch their breath and get re-energized. Uh, but we got to do a good job of getting our rest and getting healthy this week. I know there was – obviously you're coming off the emotional high of Michigan and you haven't really probably dived into much film from, from last night. But Wisconsin's front um, it was tough really. Is that just – them, you guys coming off the high of Michigan, or were, were they doing stuff schematically that was tough? Yeah, no, they they're, they're a good front, and they're one of the best rushing defenses in the country for a reason. You know, uh, Coach Leonard does a great job. They have a really good staff there. They have a good plan. Uh, you know, one of the one of the things that was tough for us is that we were not going to run that quarterback, and we didn't talk about much of that going into the game, but we were we weren't, and so uh, with what we've done this year, that was fighting a little bit with one hand behind our back, but. It is what it is, and we had to handle it. And I thought as the game went on and we started to wear them down a little bit, it, it became better and the guys played better. But you know, we had 200, I think we had 230-something yards of offense in the first half. You know, We just had some negative plays, the sacks. We fumbled them in the red zone. And so we just weren't very clean. But we were still moving the ball just fine. And we had you know, a lot of offense. Just could have been cleaner in some of the situations. Uh, front row left, Nathan. Sorry. Um, <laughs> um, I'll go. But, uh, <laughs> sorry. The, uh, talking about the rest, it's only a 21-day window before you guys play again. Just right. logistically, will, will this be that much different than like a bye week in the no. middle of the season, or how will you handle it? The only thing that's different is that you know we're going to let them go home for a couple days. So we'll have a game week preparation. We'll let them go home for a few days, and then we'll meet them at the bowl site, and then we'll redo that game week. Um, so that'll be the plan. But this is very unique. Like you said, it's only three weeks. So we'll kind of treat the first one like a bye week, like you said. The second one will be a typical game week. We'll let them go home for a few days, and then and then we'll have the game week. So uh, that'll be the plan. I think it's, it's the best move, and I think we'll have pressure to roll. And you you were asked about like the punt and the spark and that kind of thing. You've talked a lot late in the year, talent <laughs> equated games. Yep. This is going to be more equated than anything. Right. Do you get 
more aggressive? Do you push it? Do you look for a spark? Or, or do you have to rein it in? Because maybe if you're playing a really, really great team, if you take a risk and it misses, maybe it really kills you. How, how does your thinking change at all against great teams? Well, I think you just gotta do a good job schematically. You know, if, if it makes sense and, and uh, you think you can do something here and there, then you do it. But, but it has to be a calculated risk. And it's all about the schematics at this point. Because like you said, talent's equated. Both teams are gonna play really, really hard. Who executes better, who's more prepared, and, and uh, you know, who has the right game plan is gonna win the game. And final questions, fourth row left, Patrick. Brian, you mentioned the defending national champions. Obviously, a lot of those guys have, have been through the playoff, coaches, players. You guys don't have a ton of that. How do you kind of compensate for that lack of experience that, that they clearly have? Well, I, I mean, I don't think the game hasn't changed. You know, it's just being ready for that moment. And I thought uh, we showed something in the second half that we, we could uh, overcome a game and, and just impose our will on teams. And we have to carry that over into this game and show that we can do that and uh, have enough confidence to do that you know, against a team like Clemson. But, uh, but, but really, you know, our guys see ourselves as being the best in the country. So uh, the, the moment won't be too big for our guys. Uh, it's just a matter of keeping our emotions in check and, and just doing a good job of staying focused. Great. Coach, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Very much. Much.